All right, everybody, we will go ahead and get started. I'll keep an eye out for anybody straggling in here. Well, thank you so much. Happy Monday before the Christmas holiday. Thank you so much for spending your lunch hour with us. If this is your lunch hour, we're excited to bring you this subject and this new project with IPHA. Um, I think I've met, sev quote unquote, met several of you um, uh, over the course of me being here. My name's Melissa Graven. I'm new with IPHA as the Assistant Director of HIV Programs. I've been here since June. Um, prior to that, I did work at McLean County Health Department um, in their communicable disease section. Um, like I said, I started in June and primarily as the Assistant Director of HIV Programs, but also get to work with uh, on this third party billing project. So I will go ahead and get us started. I do just have a few housekeeping items. If we can just make sure that our mics are muted, um, there'll be plenty of time at the end of the presentation for questions, but feel free to drop those in the chat and we'll make sure we'll circle back around to them. I also wanted to point out that this uh, webinar is co-hosted by Phil Talley and Jeffrey Erdman. As you can see on the slide, uh, Jeffrey and Phil have lots of experience with third-party billing, so it's possible you might hear them pop up um, to add in anything I've forgotten or answer questions that may come up at the end of the presentation. So with that, we'll just go ahead and get started. Um, I imagine a lot of us on this call know what third-party billing is, but wanted to give uh, just a brief overview. Third-party billing is, is, in essence, the process of charging or billing insurance for services that your agency is providing. So it's billing the public and private insurance plans um, for the purpose of reimbursing for services that healthcare providers in your agency are providing. Um, quite often, health departments and community-based organizations and other healthcare providers are the most common providers of public health services, namely HIV and STI services. Um, several of those working in that space haven't fully developed their capacity to bill for public or private payers or health plans. Um, as you can see here, NASDAD back in 2016 did a survey that showed only half of the health departments who are delivering HIV testing are actually implementing um, billing and recouping some of those costs um, for the services that they provide. Um, really in this day and age, as we see dwindling resources and funding, HIV and STD providers need to maximize the revenue they, they are capturing in order to sustain the organization and continue to provide these quite essential HIV and STI services um, they're often the safety net coverage to ensure that low-income individuals and those newly insured under the affordable care have access to HIV and STI services. Quite often, the CBOs and local health departments are the places that people access these testing because they don't feel comfortable getting these services, perhaps at providers that they've known their entire lives and don't feel like they can disclose that information. So these agencies are often as it says here, a safety net that they can get these services. Um, with the expansion through affordable care on Medicaid, more clients um, are having, or more clients are insured, which means we have a bigger population or community that we can access and bill for services for STI, HIV, um, and including PrEP services, pre-exposure prophylaxis. The Affordable Care Act does mandate essential health benefits to be covered by insurance, uh, by insurers, which includes HIV and STI testing. Um, the USPTF has given HIV screening and, and most recently PrEP or, uh, an A rating, uh, meaning clinicians should regularly re offer these services and it should be done uh, without a cost sharing, meaning commercial insurers without a patient due balance. Um, similarly, the ACA defines essential community providers of healthcare services and communities to include local health departments, Ryan White service providers, um, and STI HIV clinics. So, health departments, community based organizations, and other healthcare providers offer a variety of essential services beyond HIV and STI screening, which could also be covered by public and private payers. And we'll see a list of those in the slide coming up. 
Um, services such as counseling for HIV and STI, PrEP initiation and counseling, risk reduction, care coordination, case management. Um, these services are often described in a billing process by a CPT code, and these are provided by a licensed or credentialed provider uh, with support of an ICD-10 diagnosis code. So here on this slide, I've laid out just a few of other services, potentially billable services that agencies might be already providing either as a fee for service or um, just as a service that they're providing in their agency. So vaccinations, developmental screening, ASQs, uh, if you're uh, doing PHQ2s or PHQ9s in your agency, um, often a lot of community-based or local health departments are offering wellness labs of a one-time payment fee that does a screening of labs for people. That's something that could be billed. Family planning, pregnancy testing. Um, I, I'm sure several agencies have people coming in wanting to be pregnancy tested, and that's something that can be billed for. COVID-19 testing and, and much, much more. I, I challenge everybody on this call to think about what services are you are providing at your agency that a physician, a nurse practitioner, or an RN um, are providing. Um, nurses are billable providers as long as they're operating under standing orders. So you can bill for your um, nursing staff time. Uh, CHW's community health work care workers, uh, I say stay tuned because at this, at this time in Illinois, they are not recognized as a billable provider, but a lot of work is going on around that to be able to be recognized as a billable provider provider by payers. Um, so hopefully soon in our future, we'll have that as an option. Okay, so what are the essentials for billing? And on this slide, we're going to go through each of these individual in a little more detail. But these are the high level kind of what we need to have in place and what is um, entailed with billing for services. So the, the first two, uh, know your service menu and your top payer. Third party billing really is only profitable if you're able to capture all the service and bill for all the services that you're doing in your agency. So if you're looking at HIV testing, think about HIV and STI screening and testing, prep counseling, risk reduction, um, any case management. Look and research for the top payers in your area. What are the top insurances utilized by your community? Um, likely most of the people on this call or agencies are serving clientele covered by Medicaid. Maybe prioritize contracting with Illinois Medicaid and the MCOs first. Looking at um, large employers in your area, what insurers or self-funded um, plans are in your area so that you can focus your time and efforts in getting contracted and congratulated with those agencies and maybe not so much time with an insurance not seen a lot or accessed a lot at your agency. Uh, provider enrollment, contracting and credentialing. Uh, this, is the, this is the process in which your agency and any providers are um, recognized and authorized to be paid for services. So determine the third party payers in which you want to contract. It does require collecting information um, about um, your agency and your providers. You have to do that with each individual insurance company and MCOs. You do have to have a national provider identifier for your practice and the clinicians. Um, you credential your cl clinicians and locations. You complete an application and other agreement as determined by the payer. Uh, review the terms and rates of the contract, negotiate any objectionable conditions, and sign the contract. So this can be a, a very uh, long process that does require a lot of work, that does require some persistence, and it does require it to be done per agency and by your providers. Um, later on in this presentation, I hope to show how this project can kind of help maybe alleviate some of the burden of this particular process. Um, setting your fee schedule. It's um, really important that you have a fee schedule and, and maintaining one fee schedule so you don't have different fee schedules depending on your insurance type. So somebody who has Medicaid insurance really shouldn't have a different fee schedule than somebody who's got a private pay insurance. 
Um, stay legal. Be be wary uh, of price fixing allegations and setting fees by querying competition. So this is really um, just making sure you're not setting your prices to undercut any providers in your in your agency, or maybe you're overbilling or overcharging. Um, ensure that available revenue is being captured. Don't undercharge. Um, don't penalize patients or overcharge. Decide on offering prompt pay or sliding fee scales. So for those clients who maybe access your services that don't have insurance, you can have a agency policy in place in which um, how you determine how you're going to recoup costs from them. Um, and of course, set fees based on a percent of Medicare uh, uh, payment. Uh, this is just looking really quickly at billing and coding. Um, I alluded to it the other uh, in previously about how you bill for services by a CPT code um, and that it's being performed by a credential provider and supported by an ICD-10 diagnosis code. So I'll go back here one second. So basically it's saying, what did you do, do during the visit? Who did Who did it? And what was the why did you do it? Who did it? And the or the and the diagnosis or problem on, of, of why you did that service. Okay. Um, here up on this slide and the next couple of slides coming up are a list of billing resources that are available to you. Um, Illinois Public Health does have some online public public health billing courses at the link below. They're incredibly informative. There's several modules of them. Illinois HFS providers page. This is the page that you're going to, um, that's, that would be incredibly helpful. HFS, Illinois Medicaid Program Advanced Cloud Technology. This is the impact system. This is where you can get, um, start your credentialing process and contract credentialing process with MCOs and Medicaid. And then I'm HIP. I'm HIP is an incredibly um, helpful organization for Medicaid health plan and providers that offer lots of resources um, and can often be a good place to start if you have any questions. Again, just more billing resources here um, on, on, on how to capture and utilize uh, billing for services. Um, most recently, NASDAQ did came, come out with a new billing resource for pre-exposure and post-exposure and other HIV preventable strategies. This is a really nice document that walks you through codes, diagnosis, um, that helps capitalize and what's going to most likely get be um, that you can bill for to get payment. So if any and all of this sounds overwhelming, um, it can be for sure, but I wanted to give you and offer you a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, Illinois Public Health has been awarded a contract by IDPH to help local health departments, community-based organizations, and other healthcare providers build and enhance their capacity to bill for these services. The goal of the project is to provide um, billing capacity and infrastructure development. Um, so through this project, what we hope to do, in, as, as, as we said in previous slides, is help walk you through that process. If you're not currently billing, um, this, this project is intended to assist you through the credentialing and contracting project, uh, project process, um, assist with billing and coding, helping to implement electronic health records if your agency has yet to implement that. Um, this project uh, intends to provide training, technical assistance, resources to help build and enhance your third party billing capacity. Um, we do have grant funds available now in which we can help facilitate this process. Uh, one of the primary objectives of this project is to expand the use of electronic health records. Um, there is funding available that can help with the implementation cost of this. And IPHA um, has again partnered with CDP and EZMRX to provide this billing and e e EHR services. So why CDP and EZMRX? Uh, the short answer is CDP and EZMRX and IPHA have been in partnership for a long time since July of 2015. 
They have um, partnered together through several iterations of a, a project similar to this. Um, long-standing history working relationship between both um, CDP and IPHA, particularly focusing on the public health sector. Currently, there's 32 local health departments using EZ. That's about a third of all local health departments in Illinois. Um, 17 of those are also using their EHR. Um, another bonus of, of this project is as of November of this year, over 30, almost, oh, well, over $36 million um, have and paid claims has um, come through EZMRX for billing services. Um, it's also incredibly advantageous to have multi, multiple local health departments using the same billing system in EHR. There's kind of strength in, strength in numbers. If you know if other local health departments um, are utilizing this service, that can be some place you can access or somebody you can call um, to ask questions about the system. What are you seeing being paid? What are, what's it look like? What, who's asking, are they accessing your service for this? What is reimbursement look like for that? Um, one of the benefits of CDP and EZMRX is they do hold a change control board meeting quarterly with where all the users of the system kind of come together and they talk through any issues they're running into. They provide, um, present ideas to e CDP, EZMRX about um, integrations or uh, things they like to see changed about the system. If enough users are requesting that, they can sometimes implement that change at no charge. Um, it's kind of a rank and rank system. They, if enough people are saying that would be a, a helpful service, they could implement that into the system as a next system upgrade. This is just a little bit more about Easy RMRX. Um, Easy EMRX, the electronic health record, is public health ready. It is one of the EHR's EMRs um, that is focused on uh, public health and public health workflows. Um, if you've used EMRs in the past, particularly if you're from a hospital system clinic setting, um, they can be incredibly helpful. But if you're using it in that sort of a capacity, you can understand how those don't always translate to public health. So with CDP's experience in the public health space, they've been able to really optimize it to be public health ready and, and optimize the workflows of public health. Um, it is secure, the security, it does um, have the type one, type two uh, audits there, and it's also HL7. It does meet uh, meaningful use through stage three. It uh, They do assist with maximized billing revenue uh, through this system. Uh, they uh, have process, an automated processing engine engine for um, claims. Um, what's nice with CDP or Easy EMRX is they will take care of the, the kind of the billing process for you. They will run down denials. They'll do that for you. So if you're currently billing on your own and you have staff tracking down payments, trying to understand why claims were rejected, um, Easy will take that on for you. Um, there is interoperability, so there is exchange between um, systems, which is nice. So iCare, if for those of you who use iCare for vaccines, that data exchange can occur. I believe it's bidirectional. You can also um, talk with Easy EMRX about possibly having your lab import into Easy EMRX. Um, that would be something on a case by case as a lab by lab if that's something that's able to be done. And lastly, they do have um, a system in place for performance measures. They do have canned reports um, that are usually often the most uh, sought after reports that you might need for funders or other funding streams. But they can also, you can also create your own reports if there's metrics that you're looking at that's specific to your agency. Again, this is just talking about the revenue cycle services. I, I touched on a lot of these briefly, but they help you and assist you through what services you're providing, what CPT codes should you be using, um, how you should bill for that service. Um, they track the claims, they post payments. If there's denials, they try to walk through some of that. To, uh, well, they don't try, they do. Um, 
we'll track down why that was denied and come come back to you and communicate why why it was denied. So if system change system changes need to happen, that can happen. And um, you're just not billing blindly and not understanding why things aren't aren't going through. Um, all right, we'll go to the next slide. So this third party billing project, um, I just described a rather large arm of this project is to get you started billing, um, get uh, have agencies get an electronic health record. But the other part of it is, especially if you're already billing and you already have an EHR, we just wanna make sure that we are here for any technical assistance and capacity building that you may have to maximize your billing. So through this project, we will publish a monthly digest um, to provide current information and updates on a variety of billing issues, um, establishing a billing committee um, that can address the needs and concerns of of local health departments or those who are act utilizing this project or billing in Illinois for public health services. Uh, a variety of trainings. Um, Bill has, has absolutely put together a wonderful training list of over, I think we're at 15 or maybe over 15 uh, training topics that we hope to have uh, host monthly. Um, in addition, we have um, our insurance emailing address that you can you can um, email with any questions you might have regarding billing. Um, Phil monitors that and provides his extensive experience and may not know the answer, but he can definitely connect you with the right person to get the answer to you. So, that is the, the end of our presentation. If you're interested in the project, we'd really love to hear from you. I've got some contact information up here for Phil, the project manager, um, or you can also email directly to the insurance billing at IPHA. I encourage you, if you heard if something during the webinar or you think, you know, maybe this isn't just for me, I don't meet a certain criteria, we're already doing that, or we're already doing this, I would encourage you to still reach out to us and see if there's some place on this project. If it maybe it's not for, you know, expanding your billing or expanding into an EHR, if it's just you have questions about um, cert certain payers or um is this a billable service? Is this a billable service? I would encourage you to reach out to us so we can see how, um, how we can help you through this project. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and open this up to questions and I, I hope Phil and Jeffrey can help chime in should anything come up. Uh, so feel free, I, know, I see we have some in the chat. Um, or if you wanna unmute, Feel free. Melissa, okay. there are a couple of questions in the chat. Mostly uh, people are asking, can they get the slides? Okay. And then, and then somebody asked if they can get information on easy EMRX. Okay. Absolutely. We can definitely get the slides out. I can share that with everybody after this presentation. Um, and it looks like Phil might have already asked about EZMRX. Susan, we can definitely email you the um, at, uh, web address for EZMRX, and we can provide you contact information to EZMRX if needed. Any other questions? Somebody just asked in the chat, if we have an existing EMR, are we still eligible for grant funds to help with billing or do we have to use easy EMRX? Bill, do you wanna take that question? Sure, the um, grant funds are uh, designed to help a uh, health department or community-based organization who currently doesn't have an EMR. So if you have an EMR, um, you wouldn't qualify for the grant funds to implement uh, a new one. Um, we are available though to help you with any billing questions you may have 
you can certainly take advantage of all the trainings that we offer. And if you're not currently billing for HIV or STI services, and you would like to um, offer those services, we can help you with the imp implementation of that as well. Any other questions? Okay. Well, if not, I sure appreciate you guys spending this noon hour with us. We will definitely get a copy of these slides out to everybody. Um, but again, if you think of anything or have any questions, feel free to reach out to Phil or I or the insurance email, we're happy to help and excited to get this project going and would love to work with you on it. So have a good rest of your Monday, everybody.